Awesome. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah, my my little presentation split into two bits. Um, first half, I'll talk about the hardware, then I'll talk about the software. Um, so, yeah, I made a piece of hardware called the Pi Connect. Um, so, um, the Pi Connect is it's an add-on hat for the Raspberry Pi. Um, the idea was to uh, make it easier to um, have a Raspberry Pi on your drone by integrating all the commonly used bits and pieces on a single board, just to make it quick and easy and safe for um, those sorts of things. Um, this was actually inspired by the, um, back in the day, the 2018 UAV challenge, our um, porter did have our porter that we flew had a Raspberry Pi in it for image analysis. And we did have a couple, uh, one of our big issues we had was I think one of the um, serial port lines vibrated off during the middle of the flight, I believe. Um, and that was sort of the inspiration was to make a dedicated board with sort of um, positive, positively locked connectors and so forth, um, just to make things so that people didn't have to sort of um, create their own solutions. Um, so there's a few bits and pieces in it. Um, first off, it contains a power supply for the Raspberry Pi, um, 5.1 volts, 3.5 amps. So it can supply a lot of power to the Pi um, to account for all sorts of peripherals. Um, for reference, the Raspberry Pi people say you only need to do about three amps or so, so it can definitely do supply power right up to the limit. Um, it's got a connected to the Raspberry Pi UART. It's got a JSTGH telemetry port, so you could just plug that straight into your flight controllers um, without worrying about which line is TX and which line is RX. And um, finally, it's got a power switch for the safe shutdown of the Raspberry Pi, which when you turn the switch off, it'll actually send a shutdown command to the Pi, wait for the Pi to shut down and um, then cut power to the Pi to um, lessen any um, SD card corruption or other funky effects like that. Um, there's a few photos of it there. Um, on the left, it's, um, just on top of a connected up to a Raspberry Pi 4. And on the right, it's connected up to a little Raspberry Pi 0. Um, I've deliberately made it sort of a small size, so you can use it on either the Raspberry Pi 0 series or the full size Raspberry Pi series, depending on what you've got on board. You can see the uh, power port and the telemetry port hooked up there on, on the left. Um, so it's a fairly small form factor board, which makes it, um, it doesn't, it won't um, present any size or weight issues to most drones. Um, next, a um, few detailed features about the Pi Connect. Um, bunch of stuff I've considered in designing the power supply, things like a wide input voltage to account for the sorts of battery voltages that people typically use on their vehicles. So a wide input voltage all the way up to 30 volts. Um, reverse input protection in case you do mix up ground and positive. Um, ESD protection, of course, um, overcurrent and short circuit protection in case you short something on your on your Pi's five volt rail, it um, won't just dis destroy anything, which is good. Um, it's compliant to the Raspberry Pi hat specification, so it will work quite nicely for Raspberry Pi without any major issues. Um, it will work with a Raspberry Pi three three plus for Raspberry Pi Zero and both the wireless and non-wireless versions. Um, and of course the JSTGH port is that's a standard ra radio side. So you, you don't need a crossover cable or anything strange to connect, connect it to your flight controller. Um, 
moving on to the software side of things. So um, to go to go with this hardware sort of as a nice accessory, I created a basically a web-based um, GUI for managing a companion computer called Arpanion Server. Um, this is all released under GPL. Um, there's a link to it under my GitHub somewhere. Um, it is quite similar to um, AP Sync in that you can manage things like your um, network and video streaming, flight, some of your flight controller configuration and so forth from the web-based GUI. Um, it's, uses, it's all written in JavaScript using the Node.js backend. Um, I'm using Node.js basically because I wanted to teach myself Node.js. Um, now it uses React JS for the front end stuff. Um, it can be used on any sort of Linux based system. Um, it doesn't, it's not specific to the Raspberry Pi. Um, it runs quite nicely on my laptop when I'm debugging it. Um, and finally, it's released under the GPL so you can go crazy with using it and modifying it and so forth. Um, there are four main sections to it. You can manage your network connections, your Wi-Fi and Ethernet, um, view and download your telemetry logs. Um, you can route your telemetry as well from the flight controller out to various UDP endpoints and uh, video streaming as well. Um, so what I will do now is I'll switch to Firefox and I'll just show a bit of a live demo of the server running. Um, so if I can figure out, I think that's new share to where is Firefox? Right there. There it is. Um, all right, so I've got it running here just um, on a Raspberry Pi. Um, so we've got the home page there. Um, now you've got flight logs, um, it lists all your flight logs. Um, you can check if you want it to actually log or not. Um, it tells you if the logging's enabled here. Um, if you want, you can start a new log file at any time or you can clear all the inactive logs. Then you can just, these are just links, you can download any of the T log files that you want. Um, Next is flight controller. So here I can select the serial device, board rate, Mavlink version, start the telemetry. It will connect and there we go, it's connected now. It's showing packets received in connection status. Um, if I want to add new UDP endpoints, I can just type them here plus a port and um, add, add and delete those there as required and that will immediately start streaming to that UDP endpoint. And um, you can also reboot the flight controller from here as well. Um, network configuration, um, that will show you, you can um, add, edit, delete network connections for your various interfaces. In particular, for your Wi-Fi interface, you can uh, manage um, hotspots like this. So, for example, if I wanted to add a new hotspot, I can just um, enter a name for it, access point, yes. Um, give the SSD a name, what band, if I want any um, WPA security, password. Um, the IP address, the starting IP address, which will be the IP address of the Pi. Um, then I can just do save changes, network added, let that refresh. Now I can go to the Wi-Fi, and there we go. And it's said there that it's that the, that connection's now active. Now I can activate and deactivate different connections as well, and those will be saved on reboot. Um, fi finally, video streaming. Once that takes a few seconds to load up. So I've got a, just a Raspberry Pi camera connected here. I can, it will also detect any 
standard USB webcams and list them here as well if you want to use those. Um, you can select your resolution. If you want the video rotated as well and the average bit rate, then I just tell it to start streaming. Now it's streaming and then it'll handily give me the um, RTSP streaming addresses for the different networks that the Pi is on. Um, both that, G, if you want GStream or it's got that there and uh, Mission Planner connection strings as well if you're using Mission Planner. Um, so that, that's the video streaming in a nutshell. And then finally, there's just a little about section here that tells you a few little stats um, about the hardware and software versions and so forth. Um, I've recently added a functionality. It'll tell you if there's a connected hat as well, which is another, another useful thing. Um, so that's basically the um, software there. Um, um, all right, and oh, should just now I've got the chat back now that I've um, gone out of sharing screen mode. Ah, thank you, Tridge, for showing the link. Um, yes, I'm happy to take any questions, I suppose, on any of that. If there's any. I, I James answered for me, thanks. I, I was just asking if Madeline was, uh, uh, if you're using Madeline on it as well. Sounds, sounds like you are, so. Yes, Very I'm using that for the Thanks. <laughs> Very impressive piece of work. Any chance that we could buy with PayPal if we sent you a personal PayPal transfer? Is that an option at all? Um, yes, sure, I can do that. Um, yeah, my website takes payments via Stripe. Um, I can take stuff on PayPal as well if you prefer PayPal. Um, yeah, just, just always hesitate to put, you know, my credit card into random websites. So. <laughs> try, to, try to avoid that when I can uh, from sure. past lessons. So uh, oh dear. much appreciated. But, uh, yes, I can, I'll see if I can add a PayPal option to the website then just to make things easier. Great. Otherwise just give your PayPal pay me link as a way of doing it. And then once you, you know, submit mm, order. That's with, the point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That'd be a simple way to do it. Um, oh yeah. It, yeah. It does use MavLink for the processing, um, I did have to make a few changes to the part how Pi Mavlink generates the JavaScript Mavlink stuff because originally it only did Mav Mavlink 1.0. I did some changes now. You can do in the JavaScript language bindings for Mavlink. You can now do Mavlink 2.0, which is kind of cool. That's for nice. did you did you do that any any of that for Java or only JavaScript? Uh, just JavaScript. I have a bunch of pull requests that need to go in for Java. Cool. Let's give a quick plug if I can. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I have one. I got one a couple weeks ago, and um, I've used it on my copter, uh, my little Hexoon EDU450. Just got the uh, TE265 on it, and uh, just you know saved myself a lot of effort because right on the bottom here I got the Pi Connect light, so I didn't have to worry about you know as as Stephen said you know getting the uh, the, the power working properly or or the uh serial connection very nice. autopilot. that was all really really easy just you know connected it up and it worked so thank you very much thanks randy very good